Hello, I am Kunov and I'm going to be teaching you guys the basis of 3D modeling. I am currently a high schooler who has about 3 years of experience in computer aided design. And, I'm g and this is a tutorial for anybody who is completely new to 3D modeling. This video is part of a multi-part series which will cover the basics of, all of most of the functions in Fusion, in Fusion 360 which is the software that we're going to be using in this video series. In this first video, we are going to be talking about the basic UI of Fusion 360, keyboard shortcuts, and the basic concepts of 3D modeling. Alright, so now let's get started with the basic UI of Fusion 360. So. On the left side is what you will be calling, a, which is called a data panel, which is meant for file management. You are going to be part of what's called a team, which would generally be made by you or other people. And inside of a team, you're going to have projects, which consist of a lot of files. Now, you can name these projects mostly whatever you want, such as if you want to make like a robot, you can name it a robot, or a car, you can name it a car. But what I have done for this tutorial is I made a project called Tutorial. So you can double click on it and it'll go to Tutorial. And if you want to go back to the view, you can just press the Home button right here. Now if you want to create a new project, you can just click this button up here and you'll be prompted with a, a tab and you can name it your project. Let's call it New. Let's call it New for now. And then you can double click on it and it'll be here. So I'll go back. Now inside of your project, you're going to be prompted with this type of screen. Right here is the upload button, where you can upload CAD files from your computer. Those usually come in the, the format of STEP or STP, or STL, as those are the really common files. And inside of a project, you can create new folders where you can organize your files. You can also set, you can also invite people into the project, so if you have multiple people multiple people who have an Autodesk account, you can just invite them through here. I would suggest when doing that, you would you would click this globe button or the web button and invite them through the, the website itself instead of through the app. So that covers up for this side. Now let's get to the top panel. Now in the top panel, there are going to be many buttons that will do specific tasks, such as the the right here is the hide data panel which is going to hide this side so if you click on it it will hide and if you click on it it will show then the file button will have multiple different functions the most fame the most um, use are going to be save save as and export what save does is it saves your specific files into the fusion 360 cloud and the save as will just save it with a specific file name and export will take your CAD file and it will create a file of that onto your actual computer whether it be a hard drive or a solid state drive and what you can do after that is you, here's the save button and there's the undo and redo which can just undo and redo specific changes now other parts of it will be notifications which will just show basic updates along with the job status and other notification center and right here for the final one is just your account where you can just set up specific settings onto this. Now, moving from the top, we're going to be moving to the bottom, which I'm which is going to also cover the keyboard shortcuts. So, there are many different keyboard shortcuts that will make generally just 3D modeling a lot easier in Fusion 360. Now what I have right here as I said is I just have a sample file of a cube just to show these specific functions. Right here is the orbit tool and the orbit tool is just rotating. Now there are two types of orbits. There is a constrained orbit and then there's a free orbit. The constrained orbit if you just click on it will just r rotate around a specific area as you can see, I'm rotating near that specific face on the cube. And if you want to, and the way you do it is you just click the, with your left mouse button, 
and if you want to change it to a free orbit you can just change it like that and the free orbit would just mostly rotate around the origin I w and you can escape to get that out the way I would suggest to keep it a constrained orbit because it will make a lot of things a lot easier now speaking of orientation or view if you want to keep the file at a specific view you can use this right here the home button if you just click the let me exit if you just click this it will give the home view and if you want to focus on specific faces like the top view you can just click the top and if you want to go back click the home you can also click on front and right another thing that's very beneficial is you can focus on a specific edge for instance if you want to focus on the front and right view together you can just do that and you can also do different types of 3d views such as corner views the home view is just a, it's just a corner it's a ver vertex of a top front and right you can also do the uh, top front and left view which will show up like that and that's how you do it for the, the navigation now if you want to do a keyboard shortcut for the orbit you just hold shift and your middle mouse button to do an orbit and you can immediately just let go of that now another part of this is the pan tool the pan tool if you just click on it would move the view laterally which will move it left right up down you know diagonally you know make basically just keeping the same orientation but just moving it around and that now another way you can just do the pen other than just clicking with your left mouse button is to use it's just to hold your middle mouse button and it will just do it like that now other parts of the of the keyboard shortcuts would include zooming in so if you zooming in zooming out so if you want to zoom out you would put your uh, your middle mouse wheel forward and if you want to zoom in you would do this backwards like that alternatively you can click on this and you can zoom out like this and you can zoom in like down so up is zoom out and down is zoom in and you can edit out like that you can also fit the view so that it will fit the entire screen or in a good view and now right here we have display settings there are multiple different types of display settings the visual style will show specific visual styles for instance you can show you can shade it with visible edges only which just shows all the shaded parts of an object with its edges you can also show it so shaded which will do the same thing but with no edges as you can see right here and you can also do shaded with hidden edges only so right here those three the parts are just hidden edges that you cannot see from this view but they will that they do exist now I would suggest to just keep it shaded with visible edges only uh, wireframe just shows kind of a black and white view that shows us only just the um, the object in a black and white view with the edges then with hidden edges it would take it would basically just show hidden edges and same thing with the visible edges only now I'd suggest to keep it a shade of visible edges only for now now what you, you can do is the environment which would just change the background color dark sky would just change it to a darker color and and gray room would change to gray tranquility blue is blue infinity pool is just like a pool color I would suggest to keep it at photo booth because it'll be the easiest to view the objects now effect now we have effects there's a lot of effects that Fusion 360 would have including ground reflection ground object shadow ambient occlusion and anti-aliasing these are all you can also do these with your GPU if you have it but I would just suggest to keep it as minimally as possible because what you can do is you can cause Fusion 360 to have render lag where it would be slowed down because it's rendering a lot of things at once now object visibility we're going to be talking about all of these a bit later but in very simple terms you can just turn off the visibility of them so that you can have a better view in like and other things now the camera there are two types of um, ways you can orient your camera there is the orthographic and the perspective now the orthographic would just show just how the object looks in 3d in the software 
and the 2D faces will just look like 2D faces. Now perspective, what perspective is, is it just generally has a real, more realistic view of an object and when you look at it from a 2D view. So to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the top. So this is currently the orthographic view of the top. Now, what will happen is, if you change it to perspective, what it will what will be shown is that this is how the object will look like if you look at it in real life from the top. Orthographic means this is how it looks in like a software, and perspective is how it kind of looks in real life. When it comes to modeling, I would suggest to keep it at orthographic for now and perspective I would suggest to do for other things. And the final thing that we'll have is the viewports which can show the multiple views. Uh, these are all just different views of the object and this is the isometric view which is just a 3D view. Now that is going to wrap it up for the uh, keyboard's shortcut section. And now we're going to be getting into the basic concepts of 3D modeling and how they're done in Fusion 360. So right here at the top, there are going to be multiple sections. And this little tab right here is a workspace tab. The workspace tab has meant many workspaces. The design tab is generally meant for you to design objects. The render tab is where you can take your objects and put them in a realistic view. Animations are generally where you're going to create animations and just tell how these objects will work in real life. A simulation would perform stress tests to see how durable an object can be. The manufacturer tab is, is a CAM tool of Fusion 360 which will generate tool paths for machines to follow so that when you manufacture them in real life, they'll follow them. And the drawing tab is where you'll create the blueprints. Now we're going to be focusing in this series on the design, render, and the drawing tab. Now let's get back to the, co the real concepts of specifically to designing. So the create tab right here is where you can be able to create objects. Fusion 360 has, or most CAD softwares, what they will do when creating is they will first have a kind of a 2D workspace called a sketch. A sketch is where you can just basically just put draw shapes like rectangles and circles and just generate like a 2D view or a 2D like model of like a 3D object. Now inside of that tab there are going to be the four main things we're going to do in the series is the extrude, the revolute, the sweep, and the loft. The extrude tab is as you can see where you take that 2D object and kind of pull it into the 3D view, basically just turning a 2D object into a 3D world. For instance, if you have like a rectangle and you pull it into the 3D view, you'll be able to make like a rectangular prism. Now the Revolute tab is where you can take an object or take a sketch and you can rotate it around an axis. This axis can be the X, Y, or Z axis depending on your preference and generally to making kind of a round object. Uh, some examples uh, that you can do for the Revolute object could be bearings and another uh, another way you can do it is for generally like uh, like tops and all that kind of stuff. So a sweep, what a sweep will do is if you have a sketch and then you have like a line that is perpendicular which is just down like 90 degrees to that sketch you can kind of pull like the extrude the sketch but instead of doing it straight you can do it along the path now this is very good in modeling like wires and also you can do like strings and you can do even more complicated geometry like a tissue now a loft this is also a very important feature what a loft does is if you have two sketches at like different heights you can form an object between those things now you can do these you can use these to make like circular or sorry columns and like pyramids and that all that kind of stuff so that really covers up for the create tab now the modify tab is when you have existing bodies 
And what you would want to do is you want to modify specific things with it. Now, the press full is going to be very useful where you can just modify a specific face of an object and you can pull it. For instance, for an extrude, you can be able to, it's kind of like the extrude tool where you can also pull it out. Or in this drawing, you can be able to um, make a circle, circle's hole bigger or smaller. Now, fillet and chamfers, fillets are just taking sharp edges and kind of rounding them off. And the benefit of this is that you can be able to make objects a lot more machinable. Like for instance, if you want to put it through a 3D printer or a CNC, it will be a lot easier to machine. And also, it will also look better in many scenarios. And the chamfer tool is doing the same thick thing by rounding off an edge, except making it rounding off with actually like a solid, um, a solid rectangle like box. And this is also beneficial for machining because I also make things a little bit better. Now, what we're gonna have right here is the assemble tab. Now, what assembly does is if you have multiple objects, you can be able to create like relationships with each other so that they could actually have like movement or they can actually like be together. Like with the assembly, you can actually quote unquote build the objects inside the Fusion 360. Now the construct tool is where you can be able to create planes, axes, and points in many different ways so that you can be able to do all these other, sorry, all these other complicated things like extrude, revolute, sweep, and loft. And it'll also just be a lot easier to do those. The inspect tool is where you can measure specific quantities such as the length, you can do the center of mass, which is very helpful, and you can do interference. And finally, the insert tab is where you can show the decals, the canvases, just any pictures to an object that you find from your computer. Now that covers it with the basic concepts of 3D modeling. Now this is just going to be a final section that's going to be talking about the specific view you have in a file along with a couple of good reminders. So right here is just a view of the document. Right here you have document settings where you can just set the units. I would suggest to keep this in inches if you're used to imperial or millimeters if you're used to metric because those are very, those are the most common and also the most the most precise. Now the name views is a section where you can talk about name mostly just views of an object. If you click right here you can just set the top view and call it the top. If you, cl if you click here you will show the front view and so on and so forth. Now if you want, I'll just go home, if you want to create a custom view you can for instance if you want to move anything this is a good view you can right click here and it will kind of save the view immediately and you can hold it and we'll call it view with your left mouse button so that when you move the object you can click here and it'll go back to the view this is going to be very helpful for renders and I'm going to cover more on that later and this right here is just going to show the origin point the axes which is the um, x y and z and the planes and this is going to show the bodies specifically. Now that is the end of the video. Now stay tuned for the next video where we're going to be doing some very basic modeling with sketches and extrude. Alright, see you guys.